Hey, so uh, today I want to talk to you about some more creative things that I do. Uh, I think this would be uh, part two. Um, so I draw mazes. I've been doing this for many, many years. I want to say from my childhood. Um, <clears throat> and when I was a kid, I would draw, there'd be one called like color maze, where it would have like three or four different mazes on one page. Um, and each maze would be a different color. There'd be like a road maze where there'd be streets and you'd go under bridges and, and stuff like that. Uh, so there'd be a whole lot of blank space that you wouldn't use at all, unlike other mazes. Um, and then there'd be one where it would actually, I, I can't remember what it was called, but it would have like objects. Um, throughout. So in order to get through the hay, you had to go and find the match. In order to get through the door, you had to find the key and, and stuff like that. Um, I haven't done one of those since I was a kid. Uh, most of the ones I do are either like road mazes or just like normal mazes. Uh, one I did that was called like an amazing maze where you had a whole bunch of starts and a whole bunch of ends. So you had to actually find the correct start to get to the end. Um, and the way I do maids is, some people like to start at the end and try to go to the start thinking that's going to be easier. And the way I do maids is, is I make them both at the same time. So no matter if you start at the start or the end, it's still going to be the same difficulty. So I do, I do mazes. Um, in fact, for this Christmas, um, I made a maze for all of my nephews and nieces and I did one sp especially for them and put their name on it And then I did a whole bunch of other ones that I gave to everybody and so I just made a I just made a uh, Scanned it and printed it out multiple copies put it in like little books And handed that out to my nieces and nephews um, And one time what I did for my whole family is I was working at a job and I had these uh, cardboard cutout things, um, and they're about the size of a piece of paper. But we got a whole bunch of them. I had no idea what to do with them, so I decided to um, make it sort of like a puzzle maze. So it was like a 12 by 12 grid that it was a puzzle that you had to put together. And then once you were able to finish the puzzle, it would give you a maze that you do and the maze was really really easy but the hard part is trying to trying to put it all together through the puzzle so uh, that's one thing uh, something else I do is create memes and I don't do this like all the time or whatever just when I run across something I think deserves it um, most of the stuff I do is nothing more than uh, like Simpsons screenshots um, but I haven't, I've, I don't do this very often and I haven't done it for a while, but, um, one of the, one of the ones I did create, and I still think it's hilarious, is something I call button adultery. And what it is, if you put buttons, if you're buttoning up your shirt and you put a button in the wrong hole, I'm going to call that button adultery. And I really hope that it goes viral and everyone calls it that because I just think that's hilarious. Think about it. You put a button in the wrong hole is button adultery. <laughs> so, but I, I made a picture of one and posted it online and just like everything else I do not too many people saw it, not too many people commented or anything like that. So, uh, no big deal. I just, I personally think it's hilarious. Uh, something else creative that I do is, um, I start listening to the uh, the Tim Ferriss podcast, and some episodes are good about what to do with your health and and stuff like that. Um, other episodes are just downright long and boring. Like you talk to a gymnast for like an hour and a half, and I just be like, "Oh God, I don't care," or talk to like a piano teacher or whatever. It's like ah. I have zero desire, um, but I did find that some of those episodes did have enough that I would 
want to I'm glad I did listen to it like maybe it did have one chunk of uh, chunk of uh, knowledge that I'm glad I listened to so you know what what I decided to do is like you know what I'm just gonna start at the very very beginning listen to every single one and record anything good that I get out of it um, and so I just call it, and I recorded my journal and I just call this the Tim Ferriss project um, and so I started at the very very beginning and went through and like I said some of them are I don't get very much out of some of them some of them I do but that's another thing that I do that I like to consider uh, creative and and I, I've mentioned this before but in my journal I do color code everything and one of the color codes is a uh, light gray light gray is less than important so it might be something that I just I just want to record but it's it's like no big deal like back in the day before I got my laser surgery I had I would put on contacts well if I put on a new pair of contacts after like two weeks I might record that well that's no one cares I don't care why did I record that so I turned that into the light gray um, light gray also means that it's really hard to see on a white background so when I'm going through reading my journal it's just something that you'd skip over um, and so what I do is I do record every single episode of the Tim Ferriss podcast that I listen to but if it has nothing or if it's boring, or if it's a one-timer, I will put it in gray. Um, and just make mention that it's like, there's nothing here, and and to, uh, I don't need to listen to this in the future. And at any point in the future, if I do want to go on the, uh, like the keto diet, or if I do want to, if I do want to become a gymnast for whatever stupid reason, then, then I do have notes saying, this is the podcast to listen to. If, if I want to uh, build up upper body strength or become a bodybuilder, well, I now have the episode to listen to. Um, 